Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. I'm sorry about that bright sunshine. There's a, there's a kind of, it's not, it's not exactly a halo, but there's kind of a, a kind of very pale, bright patch on my face. Well, that's the sun. And you're thinking, well, where, where is that idiot now? Well, I am in, yes, boys and girls, I'm in the camper van because I'm ready to go on my first major adventure. Now, I was up half the night. I read on the road, Kerouac's on the road, I'm sure you've all read that. I read Anne Musto's A Bike Ride, brilliant title that. And I read Bill Bison's A Short Walk in the Hindu Kush because I wanted to know all about road trips in a camper van. And this is me, I'm heading off into the wild blue, blue yonder, into the wilderness. You're thinking, where is he going? Well, you're going to have to come with me on the journey. Hopefully the sun won't be so bright in my face all the time and see exactly what I'm up to. So I'm ready to start the engine of my... Oh, that's good, isn't it? Bloody car doesn't work. It does now. Um, I'm ready to start my adventure. So let's go. Let's head off into the ranges, into the mountain ranges, into the seas, into the rivers. That's the radio on. Sorry. See you in a bit. Well, that's two emails in the way a bit, isn't it? Sorry about that. It's the way the phone is set up. I've driven about 60 miles and uh, I went to Orford. It's a nice place, Orford. And um, I didn't take any film. You might wonder why I didn't take any film. I didn't take any film. Uh, I went to visit the castle. And the castle's very interesting, although surrounded by scaffolding. Absolutely, it's completely surrounded by scaffolding. So I spoke to the very nice lady uh, on, uh, uh, on the till, cash desk, reception, whatever you call it. And um, I said, what, you're doing a bit of decorating? She said, yeah, the, the magnolia's getting a bit uh, worn. I said, what, new kitchen, bathroom? She said, yeah, yeah, double glazing. I said, you PVC? She said, you betcha, Everest, only fit the best. What a nice lady. Um, anyway, the castle was interesting. I didn't take any film in the castle. Had a little ride around on the bike. I'm not going to tell you which bike, you're going to have to find out. Uh, and now I'm on my way to uh, Dunwich, or Dunwich. Dunwich, I think, but spelt Dunwich. Uh, and I was just passing this place where I've stopped now, uh, which is called Lees, Lees, Leeston, Leeston Abbey, which seems to be a bit of a ruin. And the reason I suppose I'm sitting in the car doing a bit of film now, whereas I didn't in um, Orford, was because the sun was so bright and it was kind of sh it was really shining in my eyes like that. And I thought it, it just wouldn't be very interesting for you. So um, is this interesting? Maybe, maybe not. Who can say? Anyway, I'm going to have a wander around the Abbey now, uh, English Heritage, if I can get in. Um, and I might take the camera with me and show you a bit of film, because it's new to me. Well, it's Orford. Well, Orford's probably new to you as well, but I didn't take any film on that. But anyway, you know how it goes. Well, feeling 100%, if I'm honest. I, I did a test yesterday, he gives the tests, and it uh, came up negative. Um, but I've got this, this kind of tickly, tickly... <laughs> One of, those, one of those irritating, you know, when you're, uh, I don't know, you're in a cinema or, or, or I don't know, you at work with somebody or, or whatever it is, and they've got these irritating coughs. And I think it, what irritating cough means is it's not irritating to you, it's irritating to everybody else who has to put up with it. So I apologise to everybody else. Not that there's anybody else in the van, apart from the camera crew, of course, and they're used to it, um, for my cough, which is um, irritating. I could do a quick tour of the, uh, the old camper van, the Toyota Alphard camper van. If you haven't seen on my channel, if you've only sort of come to my channel because of, I don't know, Bromptons or gravel cycling or film reviews or some other nonsense that I do, and you didn't know that uh, I also have a camper van, which incidentally is called Camper Van Yolo, then, um, well, here it is. It's a uh, it's a Toyota Alphard, and you can see it here in the car park with, in the background, uh, Leaston Abbey. Um, the monks of the Abbey used to have cars, uh, not Toyotas. They had a policy of buying British. 
So they had uh, British Leylands Rovers for a while. And then, of course, they all packed up during the time of Henry VIII and they weren't allowed cars anymore. And uh, the monks were very annoyed about that. Uh, anyway, back to the Toyota Alpha. That thing on the roof is an awning. Um, it's not out at the moment. Um, it's a nice, nice vehicle, isn't it? Very attractive, I think. I'm very pleased with it. Well, there you are, Leaston Abbey. Your history in the making. Weddings, functions, corporates. Facilities include, well, you can read that. Uh, 1363, which is when they first started doing uh, weddings uh, and functions uh, in the hall, I suppose. And when the bar was first licensed. There was also a recording studio. Um, the monks used to play their lutes, a bit like a guitar, I suppose, and uh, record uh, CDs, which they used to sell, to try and make additional funds. That's quite nice, isn't it? The Noah. It's not Jesus, is it? It's like a woman. A woman on a cross holding two heads. Maybe she's some strange religious cult. Sorry, I was looking at the back. This is the front. And this is Jesus. It doesn't look much like normal representation of Jesus, does it? Although I suppose, as we have no photographs, nobody really knows what he looked like. Some kids shouting in the background. Kids always shouting in the background, aren't they? Gets on my nerves. And here is a view of some of the Abbey ruins. They look a lot like most Abbey ruins, if I'm honest. Um, they're not ruins, those bit there. I don't know if they're original though. If they are, why aren't they ruined? Good question. Oddly enough, there's, there's quite a lot of cars in the car park. And there, there are those noisy children in the background. And yet this is deserted. So whatever the cars are doing, they haven't come to look around the abbey. Or the ruins of the abbey. I suppose they haven't missed much, really, have they? They rather spoilt the impression, I think, with some of these, some of these metal fences, uh, which I, I have a feeling aren't from the original abbey. And I think they've been maybe put in in the 15th century, something like that, to prevent kids from climbing on the abbey. What do you think? There's a sign there that says keep out. That was one of the original signs when the abbey was a, a working abbey. Uh, and they didn't want people to come in, so they had up all these signs saying keep out. Not very nice, is it? And here are some steps which are leading up. Should we go up the steps? See where it leads us? It's kind of eerie in a way, isn't it? Because it's... It's kind of deserted, nobody here except me. Me, the ghosts, the ghosts of the monks. What does this say? Here the cannons are together. Cannons? Cannons. I can't see any cannons. It says the Bible was read to them during their meals by one of the cannons. Cannons, they can't read. The cannons fire cannon balls. What are they talking about? Notice the huge west window in the new perpendicular style of the later 14th century. The wall surrounding it is brick built and is an early example of brick construction in Suffolk. Interesting, isn't it? This must be the huge west window in the new perpendicular style. Did you know that? I didn't. We'll pan round there. Not nice, isn't it? And it's quite nice, it's deserted. It's kind of, isn't it? There's uh, just me, the ghost of the box, Henry VIII, and those metal fences there. They're not ghosts, they're, uh, they're all too real, I'm afraid. What you can watch is my shadow going down the stairs. That's quite interesting, isn't it? That could be like a, uh, a what, like a, a pro cinematographer comes up with that image 
and then the camera pans up like that Ooh. and uh, we're back where we were. The other point I wanted to make uh, and I've come in from looking at the Abbey now which is why my photocomic classes have gone dark is although it's, it's sunny and, it, and it's quite nice outside it's, it's actually pretty cold you know that, you know that kind of chill wind um, not, the, not the sort of chill wind that you get after eating curry but the sort of chill wind that you get when it blows down you know when it blows down from Siberia and other parts of Antarctica and you just feel that when you feel the chill I suppose because it's uh, look it's quite cold anyway back on the car uh, back in the camper van camper van yolo did I tell you that was his name and I'm heading off to Dunwich might take some film there might not you have to wait and see Dunwich, Dunwich Beach. If you haven't heard of Dunwich, and what I'm going to tell you is true, by the way, uh, Dunwich was uh, was in in medieval times one of the largest ports in Britain, a population of four thousand people. Hard to imagine now, but uh, over the years, and not long after that, um, it started to erode. And a couple of kilometres has actually eroded over the years. And that town of Dunwich, or the main town of Dunwich, is now somewhere out there under the sea. So current Dunwich has a population of only about a hundred. Just goes to show how times can change. An attractive beach nonetheless. Even if what we're essentially looking out onto is a large watery graveyard. I suppose there could be kind of medieval beach huts. Can you imagine back in the 14th century, one of these beach huts would have cost you about two bob, and now it would cost you about a quarter of a million quid. I guess that's inflation for you. Well, a swift cup of tea in the cafe on the beach, and I've walked up to Greyfriars Medieval Friary, uh, which is a kind of a priory clinic of the medieval times. In other words, a place where uh, aging rock stars, uh, celebrities, uh, Tory MPs who'd fallen on hard times came to, uh, or to dry out, or to uh, decompress or de-stress. I suppose, and they would have they would have walked through this stone arch and would have been uh, accosted by some people in white coats. Do they still wear white coats? I don't know. Who would have relieved them of uh, any residual stocks of alcohol or, or drugs or uh, Russian oligarch money and um, sent them off to this um, rather impressive uh, kind of medieval Premier Inn, which is, I mean, it's an enormous place. Look at the, I mean, the size of that gate, you get bloody Range Rover through there, and then the walls go, you can follow my finger, the walls go all the way around there, now they're a good, good few hundred yards away. This was a massive place. The, the number of uh, celebrities and uh, glamour models who needed uh, drying out and Tory MPs who needed de-stressing must have been phenomenal. They could have had thousands of people here. No wonder Dunwich was such a popular place to come on holiday until it all fell into the sea. It says you are free. What does it say? You are free to walk around the unfenced areas, but please be careful not to cause any damage or leave litter on the site. If you walk directly ahead, you can look at the ruins in more detail. See the last grave from the footpath and then turn south to walk through the clifftop wood. Shall we do that? Might as well. Got nothing else to do. The thing about it is, and I'm, I'm just gonna turn this around so you can see me. How's that? The thing about it is that the cafe on the beach is packed with people eating fish and chips and spotted dick and custard and 
bacon rolls and other vegan alternatives. And yet, you go for a short walk up here to the medieval Priory Friary, and I'm the only idiot here. I mean, why am I the only person who is gracing this particular establishment? Don't know. There's not much left, is there? You can't see, can you? Because you're looking at me. If I swing round, then you can see what's behind me, like that, if I move my face. How's that? I mean, it's not much, is it? Considering the size of the bloody place, you'd think there'd be more left, wouldn't you? I'd complain if I were you. Leave a comment down below if you want to complain. I won't respond, but you can leave a comment. Do not climb on the ruins. I suppose back in sort of medieval times, it would say, uh, you know, celebrities, glamour models, Tory MPs, do not climb the walls, no matter how mad you feel you are, or could be, or should be, even. There's a lot of kind of humps. You see these humps on the ground. I don't know if it's got something to do with being 66. It was my birthday a few days ago, in case you didn't know. But I find that my balance is pretty much fucked, actually. I'm not, I'm not falling over, um, but I feel like I'm about to fall over. Does that make sense? Does that happen to you? Only the answer if you're 66 or older. If you're younger, I'm not interested. Here's a picture of what it would have looked like. So that's, that's what's left, and that's what they say it would have looked like. Somebody's done a lot of thinking of stone work around here, haven't they? Now this is fascinating, the last grave. This is the last surviving gravestone from the churchyard of the medieval church of All Saints, which lay about 40 metres to the east of this spot. Old bones still occasionally weather out of the cliff face. Isn't that interesting? Gravestone reads in memory of Jacob Forster, who departed this life March 12th, 1796, aged 38 years. Shall we have a look? That's me. Well, obviously it's me. And that's the gravestone. Isn't that interesting? So imagine, imagine if that was you, and you had the last grave. I mean, you'd, you'd feel quite chuffed about that, wouldn't you? Something you'd tell your grandchildren. Maybe not. <laughs> As in my poor taste, Judith. Beware of Cliff Edge. <laughs> the point at my school called Cliff Edge. He was a right bastard. Everybody hated him. That's where the sign came from. Beware of Cliff Edge. It was all around my school. There's a sign back there saying, Cliff may collapse without warning. Stay at least two metres from the edge. I mean... That, I mean, that's... That's not a sign you particularly want to see, is it? I mean, you'd think that, you know, God or somebody like that could give a warning. Something like, you know, Oi, you, with the red jacket and the silly cap holding the iPhone. Get off the cliff edge, it's going to collapse. And, you, I mean, you'd get up to heaven. You'd say, I thought there wasn't going to be any warning. Yeah, well, there was. So why are you here? Well, I didn't pay any attention. There's a, there's a message there. I'm not sure what it is. There's some people down there on the beach. Shall I, shall I hone in? Hone in? That's not the word, is it? Yeah. They're going to pass. Is there a handoff? Yeah, did you see the handoff? There's always a handoff in uh, uh, crime stories, isn't there? See, there's the sign from the other side. I mean, supposing it did collapse, right? And they dug me out after a few weeks out of the sand. And my iPhone was still working because, of course, the iPhone is going to still work, isn't it? And they played back the film. And they say, look at this. He knew it could collapse. And he still walked there. Well, but not show this to the wife. She won't be happy at all. The other thing you may have about Dunwich, may know about Dunwich, is that annually on the summer solstice, the uh, longest day of the year, uh, there is a bike ride that takes place from the centre of London to Dunwich, Dunwich Beach, as it happens, uh, riding through the night. Um, 
is not a ride I've done myself. I, I sort of fancy doing it, but I don't really ride in, in the dark very much, so I'm not massively keen. Um, but it's, uh, it's supposed to be a great event, and loads of people do it. So uh, maybe one year, before I'm 70, I might have to give it a whirl. What do you think? Yes? No? Maybe? Perhaps. We'll see. That's one of those Julia Elliott looks, isn't it? Yeah, but she's got 100,000 subscribers, Julia. You've only got five and a half. Well, you know, the night is yet young. Yeah, but you're 66, Julia, and you're running out of time. Yeah, good point. Come on, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. There. That's all I'm going to say about the subject. Till the next time. And it's tradition like. And you must know it ain't easy to make a living just from the land. Or like your old dad from fishing. So this little business helps my hands me. You know what I mean. So, when we hear a ship's coming, one of us has to keep watch. Now, the best lookout spot is the old old saint's tower up on the cliff. Once the ships are sighted, we send a secret message. If you're wondering who that old bugger was that you were just listening to, uh, it wasn't me. Um, it was uh, the ghost of Dunwich Past, who uh, was in the museum. Uh, sat there for a couple of hundred years, uh, entertaining visitors. It's a very interesting museum, if you ever come to Dunwich. And uh, take a good look at it. It shows you the... Uh, the history of Dunwich and uh, you know when you always you go into a museum and you find you see a little bit of metal in a case and they say uh, part of Roman brooch and you think are you sure about that and, and this one right they had a bit of metal about that long and it said part of a Roman pair of tweezers and I'm thinking yeah yeah you have a meal you having a laugh did they have tweezers in Roman times? Interesting thought, isn't it? What did they use them for? Same thing as we use tweezers for, I suppose. I wonder if, I, if a pair of my tweezers will be found in a couple of thousand years and somebody will go into a museum and it will say, um, 21st century tweezers, part of. Possibly owned by Julian Hutchings, the YouTuber. Or possibly not. It's time to rain. Just as when I got back in the car. I'm going to head off now. Do you want to know where I'm going? I'm going to a campsite. The first time I've stayed on a campsite. <coughs> That's that irritating cough I was telling you about. Just in case you uh, didn't believe me. We will now. This is Southwold. And this is a view from out of the front window of the Alphard. Am I turning into one of these people who kind of goes to the beach and then just sits in the car and looks at the view? Am I already one of those people? But the thing is, right, I'm in the car park. I'll turn this around now so you can see me. So I'm in the car park, right? Glasses have gone dark because I've been out in the sun. Went to the parking meter to buy, get a ticket. But of course, you can only get a ticket if you pay by cash. I mean, who carries cash? these days. I mean, I'm, I'm like the Queen. I don't carry cash. And of course, it doesn't take cards because, you know, this place is still in you know the 1950s. So I can't buy a ticket. And so I can't park. So I can't go for a walk. So I'm just going to have to sit in the car, record a piece to camera, as they say, like a like Kate Aidy or something. Now, yeah, Kate Aidy's long ago. You know, what, Try and think of something more recent, Julian. Krishna and Guru Murthy, or Kathy Newman, that's it, Kathy Newman. I want to be Kathy Newman. So I'm Kathy Newman re recording a piece to camera, moaning, because I haven't got any money to put in the parking meter. So I can't pay for my parking, so I can't stay here. So I'm going to have to leave. Irritating, isn't it? Not just my cough that's irritating, quite a few things. Do you think I'm turning into one of those people who moans all the time? You're going to say, what have you been turning into? You always be one of those people who moans all the time, you miserable fucker. <laughs> and I'm even more 
grumpy and miserable and uh, depressed. No, not depressed. Not depressed. Depression is a, is a serious illness. I don't, I don't have that. I don't have a serious illness. I just have mild irritation. How's that? It's not terminal. It's not terminal. I might recover. On the other hand, I might not. Anyway, so um, I suppose I might as well head off to uh, where I'm planning to stay the night. I'm kind of putting it off. Do you sense I'm putting it off? Because I haven't slept in the, in the van yet. I've had it for about six months. Jesus. I've had the gap of it for six months and I haven't slept in it yet. I'm going to have to sleep in it tonight, even though I'm not feeling 100%. Yeah, because I've got this irritating cough and a bit of a sniffle. But I'm not, no, I'm, I'm tested, tested negative. Or not tested positive. Is that the same thing? I'm not sure. But I'll treat it as though it is. Let's go. Let's go. Now I can't find the keys. Let's go. Well, here I am. I've arrived. My first campsite. My first Camper Vaniolo stop for the night and it's called the Triple Plea uh, pub and um, campsite I suppose. Uh, the pub is actually closed until next week but I did know that when I booked and uh, I'll show you a little bit around the site. Uh, been to the toilet, yeah, toilets, all right, nice clean toilet, a couple of basins, shower, uh, hand dryer, paper towels, uh, toilet paper in the toilet, which is always useful, even though I did bring my own 18 rolls just in case. You never know, you never know. And the thing is, right, I bought a couple of items of food, not very much, and uh, saw some nice people there in a Volkswagen, uh, Volkswagen, what do you call it, beach thing, of course. And I was asking them where there was a shop and they said there was a Londis next to a petrol station. So I thought, well, that's not really a shop, is it? Anyway, I drove down into town, Halesworth, parked up, and found a spa. Yes, a spa. And I bought loads and loads of shit. And you know what I was thinking? I mean, why, why would you do that, Junior? I suppose it's something to do with the fact that it is now um, up past four, Right, it's not going to get dark till I don't know about quarter to eight, something like that. Well, I've got nothing to do except eat, so I bought loads of loads of shit. But of course, you want to have like uh, if you want to have some bread, you've got to have butter. Well, you know what? I have, like, buy a old packet of butter. I mean, what do you do with it? So I thought, I oh, know, I know. Oh, right, I'll buy some mayonnaise. Right, so I've got some tuna fish, got some rolls. Don't need butter, just have a shitload of mayonnaise, and then that doesn't go off quite. In the same way as butter does, I hope. And I uh, bought a load of chocolate, a load of biscuits, a load of cake. I mean, just you know, shit basically. I mean, is that is that what camper van life is like? Is that why, is that why everybody in camper vans is so fat? <laughs> that's a horrible thing to say, by the way, and it's not true. That's that's just a, a generalisation. Just, just speak for yourself, Julian. Well, I'm speaking for myself. I just bought a load of shit. Um, so anyway, I parked up and um, gonna find out how to sort the bed out. I bought a fold-up chair. That is going to be fun trying to work that out. But um, anyway, we'll see. Do you want to have a look at the campsite? Might as well. You got nothing else to do, have you? Well, that's it. <coughs> oh, sorry, got that irritating cough still. Uh, that's the toilet block that you can see there. Um, these are the pitches, I guess they call these pitches. Here's my electrical hookup. I met the governor, I assume he was the governor, um, told me there was a grey waste tank, I'm not sure what that was. Uh, the, waste, the waste that I produce is not grey, I can tell you that for nothing. Um, a water, a hose, he said, that was nice, electrical points. I mean, what else do you need? What else do you need? Um, so what what are you paying for at the end of the day? Well, you, you're paying for a patch of land, a bit of electric and a toilet, I suppose. Um, I mean, we'll get into the whole toilet situation, but maybe not in this video because I could just go on for hours about it. 
It looks all right. <laughs> got any complaints? We've got no complaints. So, so. Anyway, I have to um, sort the mat out, see how we get on. Well, there is Camper Vagnolo. Actually, I thought of another one while I was driving along, which is Camper Van, Camper Vancher. Camper Van, that doesn't really work, does it? Well, I've amazed myself because, look at that, I managed to connect that orange cable to the electrical point. Whether it's actually doing anything or not, I don't really know. But anyway, I managed to connect it. Then I filled up my jerry can, uh, point my school called jerry can, um, with water from my Highland Spring water box that I bought. I don't know if you can see it there, just sitting in the entrance. And the most amazing thing, I managed to put this chair together. Uh, this, I've got this chair from Decathlon, by the way. Um, I managed to put it together without even looking at the instructions. Not that I ever look at the instructions. And um, uh, the inside of the car is a bit of a mess, of course. The inside of Camper, Vent Camper Van Venture doesn't work that, does it? It's a bit of a mess. Um, but you can see there, over the back seat, that beautiful blanket which was made by my favourite daughter and which I may well be sleeping under tonight if I can manage to sort the bed out. One thing I haven't really been able to do is um, get the front seat or the front passenger seat rather to swivel. So I may practice that a bit. But anyway, I'm, I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed. And why shouldn't I be? God, wonders will never cease. I've managed to do a few other things which will surprise me. Now I know, you know, hashtag van lifers and you regular camper van uh, YouTubers and watchers will think my puny efforts are pretty puny. And I agree they are, but for me they're quite an achievement. So I managed to put the roof up. That's uh, one thing. I also managed to put that uh, uh, kind of blackout cover over the front windscreen, uh, which is just as well because the kind of uh, popper covers that I got to go in the inside of the windows uh, I seem to have left the poppers at home which is uh, a bit of a shame but uh, such is life and looking inside my uh, abode as you can see it is still rather messy but I'm gradually getting myself sorted and I need to sort out my cycling kit that I'm going to wear in the morning for my cycle ride and I need to sort out which bags I'm going to use on which bike. Oh, God, wonders will never cease. Well, I managed to get it all done before it's time for bed. I don't know, actually. We'll see. Well, now you see me sitting in the van. Um, what have I been doing? It's hard to say, really. I suppose I've been doing a lot of sorting out. And one thing you do notice is with the Alphard, I mean, it's a nice, nice camper van, don't get me wrong. But there's not a lot of room to kind of manoeuvre around and walk around. And I still haven't quite got used to the, to the pop top being up. So I'm kind of walking around hunched like that, forgetting that I can actually stand up. Um, but I managed to get the cooker uh, for light, got some gas, uh, got my plate. I've made, made a cup of tea, yes, boiled a kettle, made a cup of tea. You'd be surprised at all this. And now got some... These are some donuts for my pudding. I've got these bread rolls. These are bar Barney's, Bummies, Barney's. Barney's four finger rolls. Uh, okay, Barney, don't want to know too much about that. And here, thank you for that. I have to put my tea over there. Let me get my saucepan, my collapsible saucepan, special collapsible saucepan, and in here I've got some special collapsible, I've got nowhere to put the lid, that's something I need to sort out, um, some hot dogs, yes, yeah, some frankfurters, um, but I haven't got any tongs, so I'm going to have to burn my fingers getting them out, oh, oh there we are, oh, oh. Careful, Julian. Oh, um, uh, you can't actually. Oh, 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 that's hot. Oh, that's hot. Oh, look at. 
<laughs> That's faintly disgusting, isn't it? Should we see what it tastes like? Mm. That is not just faintly disgusting. That is almost completely disgusting. Anyway, I'm going to put it in a bread roll try and drown the taste. Um, so I should have in my cutlery drawer here a knife. Yep, then I've got a knife. So I'm going to cut my bread roll open like that. I was saying about, about the butter, so there isn't any butter, so it's a little bit dry. So there we are, I've put the old uh, hot dog in the roll. Didn't buy any mustard, that was a mistake. Well, um, well, it's not great, let's be honest, it's not great. But, ow, mm, bit my lip there. Um, but it's food. Um, afterwards, I've got about 40 different types of chocolate, so I'm going to tuck into that. It's going to be my pudding, but um, it's nice in the van. I've got to be honest, it's nice in the van. As, as I said, a little bit difficult walking around, getting cramped and so on and so forth. Um, the weather, but it would be nice if it was if it was warmer, because it's quite cold out there. It is quite cold, let's be honest. And although I have got a heater, which I could put on, for some reason I'm not putting it on. Um, I don't want to energy crisis, you know, being careful. Anyway, um, I'm going to tuck in, finish my dinner. You don't want to watch that. So uh, catch up with you a bit later on, perhaps when it's time for bed, uh, which could be quite soon, even though it's broad daylight outside. But I've got no TV, I've got nothing to do. Put a book, I suppose, we read that. Anyway, bon appetit. Right, sorry, I forgot to show you how the bed came out. It's electric anyway, so you press a button and it unfolds. And here is the bed uh, flat, obviously. Uh, it's got this blanket on it made by my favourite daughter and underneath is this kind of fleecy thing and then underneath is this which is called, as I expect you know, she's called a duvalet which is a kind of combination uh, duvet and thin mattress. Uh, I've not slept on it before so this will be the first night so I'm going to see how it goes. So uh, it's pretty cosy. Uh, I've still got the still got the roof up, as you can see. Uh, it's a little bit cold with the roof up because these these sort of panels they don't provide any kind of insulation. And if you unzip this, uh, I'll just unzip it. If I can find the zip, there it is. Uh, as you can see, there's kind of mesh which should stop the bugs but it certainly allows all the heat that there might be in the van to escape. I did have the diesel heater on, for, not the diesel heater, the petrol heater on for a little while but now I've turned it off. Um, if I get on the bed, I'm getting on the bed, you can see, uh, well, I don't mean see down there, there's about two feet, perhaps about two and a half feet of space. So not a great deal of space. I suppose if I had a, a porta potty that would just fit down there. But it's you know pretty difficult to manoeuvre. And uh if you're trying to get up in the night and have a dump in the porta potty and there's somebody else in the van, well I'm not sure I'd want to be that somebody else. But anyway, it's uh Pretty cosy setup for one person at least. Well, that's me. Oh, <laughs> out of breath. Uh, that's me in the bed, obviously. Um, one thing is you can't really do uh, is sit up in bed. I might have to give some thought to how I can sort that out. I suppose I'm leaning against the, this is the curtain for the back window. Of course, so it's all right if you're lying down and you're sleeping, but if you want to kind of read in bed, not particularly comfortable. Um, well, we'll see what happens about that. 
I suppose. Still got the roof open. I don't know if you can see there. Not really. Uh, it's cosy, comfortable. Got my socks on, just in case it gets a bit cold in the night. And uh, I mean, manoeuvring in the night to, you know, get up and take a leak, as one does being a certain age. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world, but I suppose the advantage is there's nobody here to disturb other than me. And I'll already be disturbed, if that makes sense. So, uh, well, that's probably the end of this video, actually. I will be making a different video tomorrow uh, because I'm going on a bike ride. And that's going to be exciting. I mean, that's the reason why I'm on this trip, primarily, apart from... Uh, Wanted to make this video, of course, for you and uh, spend the night in the camper van. So uh, it's going to be a bit of a bush in the morning because I need to get off to the start of the bike ride. And uh, hopefully I'll manage to get off without leaving the electrical cable, plug it in. But uh, who knows? So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, tell your friends, and do remember that uh, my channel raises money for charity and currently is raising money for www.dec.org.uk which is the kind of UK charity coordinating uh, humanitarian relief for the terrible situation in Ukraine. So uh, please take care and uh, please sleep tight in your own beds. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Well, good morning and uh, a coda to the video that you've just watched, hopefully. Um, not a great night, if I'm honest. Um, not entirely sure that I slept at all. Now, you've probably experienced this where you have uh, nights where you, you feel you didn't sleep at all, and in fact, you slept quite a lot. Uh, this was not one of those nights. This was one of those nights where I didn't feel that I slept at all, and I didn't sleep at all. Um, reasons for that? Well, it was cold. Bloody cold. Not in not in the bed and under the covers, but you know that feeling when your head, and I believe Shackleton felt this uh, in, the, in the Antarctic, your head just feels really cold. It's like this cold air swirling around your head. The bed itself is also... It's not that it's uncomfortable. Uh, the main issue for me uh, is that the, the pillow that, that I bought, which was a decathlon thing, and this is not a criticism of decathlon, um, this is a kind of camping pillow. Well, at home, I, I tend to sleep with three pillows, so I'm quite sort of raised up with my head, and uh, with that decathlon pillow, I'm not raised up at all. Um, and... Uh, and so it was uncomfortable, and uh, I tried sleeping on my back, that didn't really work. I tried sleeping on the right side, that didn't really work. I tried sleeping on the left side, that didn't really work. I tried sleeping on my, on my uh, stomach, that didn't really work. And that kind of ran out of options for me. So uh, not a great night. The other thing I've just realised, and um, uh, this is something that hadn't occurred to me, that the controls for the uh, petrol heater are uh, on the uh, back seat or at the bottom of the back seat, but you can't access it when the bed is un un uh, unfolded. So I thought it, uh, on a few occasions during the night, I thought, well, I'll, I'll put the heating on. Um, but it was just as well I didn't try because I couldn't have done it. I would have had to fold up the bed, put the heating on, fold down the bed. And uh, so no, no, that, is not, that is not great. Now, I will say that um, Martin Goff at Imperial Leisure Vehicles, which is where I bought the, the Alpha, did say last time I saw him that they would be changing the location of the controls because it's a frankly mad place uh, to put the heating controls, but uh, at the moment they're in the wrong place. So uh, there we are, not a great night. Um, what else can I say? Uh, apart from the fact, not feeling 100% frozen to fucking death. I mean, I felt almost, 
I mean, you know, the story of Captain Oates on the Scots uh, abort a um, what's the word, failed trip to reach the South Pole, who uh, uh, was really cold and, and got up and went out of the tent and said, I'm going out for a walk. I may be gone for some time. Then look for a 7 Eleven. 7 Eleven, they've got 7 Elevens now. Anyway, I'm going to look for a spa. That's what I wanted. It's fancy. Fancy a bit of chocolate. Anyway. Uh, I almost did a Captain Oates, um, and frankly, almost did a Captain Oates, which was laying in the van and freezing to death. <laughs> but no Captain Scott to uh, snuggle up to to keep me warm. So uh, anyway, there you are. It's nearly six o'clock, so God, there's nothing to be gained from staying in bed. <laughs> so I uh, might as well get up face the day so uh, thanks for watching this epilogue and uh, see you next time